Hi guys, my name is Jan Perchik. I am the mixing engineer on Daniel Wise uh, solo album that recently came out named Dive. And uh, Daniel was kind enough to um, ask me to share some mixing uh, secrets um, on uh, two of the songs from the album, which we're gonna do today. So the first song is K4Y and um, what I have here is uh, the session, actually. And um, so I'm just going to, without any further ado, um, I will just show you my routing because I think that's really important to understand um, in order to um, sort of uh, get the idea of how I achieve the sound. Um, so I basically uh, used analog summing um, on this album, surprisingly, because on most of the albums I don't use analog summing, but on this one actually um, I felt like uh, some liveliness of the analog summing um, could be added to this, and I was just going for really natural dynamics and maybe like uh, wider panning and not so transient driven um, approach, but rather on, more on the softer side and on the fatter side uh, of the overall sound. So I basically have this analog summon where I'm sending this uh, electric guitar. It's an electric guitar bus that I'm sending to 5-6, which is one of my analog summing pair um, uh, channels. And uh, that goes directly uh, that comes out of uh, my UED, goes into analog summing, and from the analog summing it hits my Fusion SSL, and then from Fusion SSL um, it gets into my Apogee converter, and from Apogee converter I record it through speed of I record it back into Pro Tools. So that's pretty much the sound flow uh, of how I set up this session. The first source is um, uh, Electric Guitar DI um, that Daniel sent me, and another one was a dynamic mic. So these two signals, they're actually being routed to my electric guitar uh, bus, and from the bus, as I mentioned before, it goes to my analog summing channel. So on this mic, let's just look what I use. I use this uh, SoftTube Console 1, which is the SSL emulation. And we are in channel 20, so this is um, what I have the initial stages. I love SSL for guitars, so that's why I just decided to go directly for SSL sound. So this is just a typical EQ. I felt like there was um, some muddiness here. So I uh, cut 3 dB on um, 200 hertz, uh, 300 hertz. Um, also, there's always like this piercing quality of the guitar. Uh, around 3 or 4K, so that's kind of what I did here, although they, the Q is really narrow, so I didn't want to uh, affect the sound of the guitar too much. Um, and uh, what did I do here? Okay, yeah, so I have a, a bell here at 5K. I just wanted to add some, um, some definition to the sound. I have a relatively very uh, mild compression here, so that's pretty much... Um, oh, and I have a high-pass filters around 20 that just to remove all the rumbling stuff uh, from the mic recording. Um, so that's the first um, processing uh, plugin that I have. Then I have um, Air EQ, which is one of my favorite EQs. It was designed by Fabrice, who's also a musician. So this design, this EQ is extremely musical. And I know a lot of people use Fab Filter Q3, which is also one of my favorites, but uh, for musical stuff, for live stuff, I really love this EQ, um, and it's in, uh, by Steven Slate. Um, so here, actually I did quite a lot of processing here, so if you guys want to listen to the sound of the guitar um, soloed, uh, I can bypass it. So you can hear that a lot of the muddiness is being um, uh, has been kind of controlled here. And um, as I've said before, this is a very musical uh, EQ. So 
you can't really hear it's not it's a very subtle difference but it, it really does what it needs and then um this is my good old friend um active uh, eq and it's again um by mcdsp i really love this plugin it's an active equalizer which allows me to also control uh, compression little ducking of uh 3400 again this is like a very uh piercing uh, guitar quality that needs to be tamed and i'm doing exactly the same thing at 24. let's listen to what it does <laughs> So as you can hear when the pick hits the string, like you can obviously hear the, the sort of uh, piercing quality of the guitar, and that's pretty much what I want to uh, what I want to control without actually changing again the quality of the sound, and that's pretty much the goal. I don't want to shape the sound at the point where it's not recognizable by the artist. Um, so every single movement that I, that I do is rather a baby step, very small increments, and make sure that um, it rather controls things. Um, and not uh, necessarily changing the quality of, of, of the actual, the nature of the actual sound of the guitar. But I have this rear bus emulation from SSL consoles. So you can actually recreate something similar to it. And I'm in this case using the famous uh, rear bus compressor, uh, which is um, kind of, um, that was like Andrew Shep's uh, trick uh, that I learned from one of his seminars. I'm basically using 1176 and uh, it's just a parallel compressor. Uh, it sends information to the three boss. I also um, cut a little bit of, of the piercing frequency on, on this as well as uh, 1176 tends to sound a little bit harsh. Let's listen to it with and without the rear bus compressor. You will definitely be able to hear the difference. <laughs> So you can hear the, the guitar becomes much closer. Uh, let's look at our DI channel and see what we're doing here. So let me just, uh, again, play the DI. So um, again, I processed uh, this DI. Let's look at um, the processing. Um, that I applied here. So again, the same uh, SSL channel. Um, again, I kind of did very similar thing to it. Um, cut the muddiness, uh, I high passed it at 37. Um, I'm using pretty mild compression here. And then I have an amp uh, emulation here by Softube. I really, really like um, uh, their Fender um, emulation. And this is from Vintage Amp Room by Subtip. Uh, I've been using it forever. I think I've had it for like over 10 years or something. Um, and uh, I'm using the uh, off-axis mic uh, technique here. So let's hear it with, and then we can hear it without, and then we can see what it's doing to the actual DI. <laughs> So now let's just listen to two of these sounds together because again, uh, everything I did here on this channel was in relation to uh, the dynamic microphone. And, and uh, um, again, this is something that you wanna do. Uh, you never solo really anything and you listen to the things in the um, context of the things it's supposed to sound with. Uh, let's hear the way these two things sound together. <laughs> If you have tons of plugins and if you have microphones, make sure that everything, once you reach the sound that you want, that everything sounds in, in, in phase. And as I just checked, uh, when it was not in phase, um, 
uh, it didn't sound as fat as and, and, and as present as it should have. Let's take a look at the uh, auxiliary because uh, once I dial up the sound that I really want, um, I usually send it to auxiliary. And so um, this is just for overall um, sound quality. Um, so let's look at what we have here. So uh, another SSL channel strip here, uh, just um, fixing the overall sound. And again, um, I felt like it had a lot of um, really these uh, fat lows uh, around 143. It's, it's, it's kind of relatively boomy uh, frequency range. So I, uh, I guess I get, got rid of that uh, 3dB cut. And that's pretty much really what I did here. Um, I use uh, Fairchild. Yeah, so I'm getting minus two, and which is also quite unusual because I usually don't use Fairchild for compression as much as I just use the sound because it just has such a, um, it just adds so many uh, subharmonics and uh, rich, makes the sound very rich because of all the you know tubes that uh, original Fairchild has. But in this case, I'm actually uh, compressing it as well a little bit, um, not by much, but minus 2 dB, I guess. I really want the, this guitar to be constantly present as it's a solo instrument on a guitar uh, virtuoso album. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, another uh, correctional cue, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, processing a lot of um, sort of surgical stuff that goes here. Again, I was not happy with the muddiness of it, and um, I just want more surgical. Um, and again, I'm not really afraid of all these EQs overlapping here, uh, which might not be such a good idea, but I guess I, I really needed to take care of, of uh, those frequencies. Again, guitar is a tricky instrument, almost like a piano or like a vocal. So if it requires a lot of surgical correction, uh, then, you know, that's fine. Um, I love API um, on, on guitars. API just sounds great, 550A sounds really, really good. So I added a little bit more of um, sort of air uh, quality to it. Um, uh, and then even more definition um, as it's a solo guitar um, album. So, um, and uh, again, I cut the muddiness, and for some reason, I just still wasn't happy with the, the way it sounded. Um, this is obviously Echo Boy, um, uh, just a typical delay. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I might be uh, using it in certain spots. So here it's like bypassed, and here, certain spot, it's uh, automated. So um, what else do I have here? Oh black hole that I will get there um, and uh, I use the VTM virtual tape machine by Steven Slate and it's just a great sounding tape um, really really puts that finish and touch on that so um, let's just maybe listen to the guitar the way it sounds and then I'll remove um, these EQs one after another <laughs> So that's as far as the inserts on, on, on the auxiliary and inserts on individual channels. Now, as you can see, I also have a room play delay and overdrive on the guitar sound as well. So if we look at our auxiliary channels, let's see what kind of room I have here. And that's Z room. Yeah, I really love this um, by DUI plugin and um, it's just a typical room preset. Sometimes uh, I, really what's really important to me is just to maybe get a, a certain feel, not so much to hear it. Uh, let's see, I also have a plate, EMT, uh, great plate sound. Typically I um, EQ my plates, um, so just cut the lows and cut the highs. 
Um, the highs, for the most part, sound very unnatural you know, on plates. So I cut all the way probably to like, um, I don't know, uh, maybe even 8K uh, low pass it. Um, and then high pass it probably up to 100, sometimes even 200. So uh, the lows of the plate don't interfere with the actual sound. Uh, the, these are frequencies. They just kind of mud up uh, the stuff that I've been trying to get rid of on my guitar. So that's just something that's important. Okay, I have another delay. Okay, so I have a four, uh, a quarter note delay. Um, and I have modulation, I have smear, dry and wet, chorus, all of these parameters. I absolutely love this delay. Um, it has its very unique sound. Um, it sounds very, very analog, uh, almost like dirty. You can make it pretty dirty um, with the feedback that kind of needs to be controlled by it. As soon as you dial it, it just sounds fantastic by BOZ. Um, so if I have quarter delay, I guess I have to I have another quarter delay on the Eco Boy. Apparently they do. I have another quarter delay, um, a little bit saturated a studio tape. Um, so let's just hear it without those. Yes, I forgot to mention the overdrive. So let's listen to what do we have for overdrive? Oh yes, that's the Sans Amp. Oh, Sans Amp, extremely, extremely important. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm using the Plaxi. That's the sound basically that gives us the overdrive. Uh, that's probably the thing that I should have started with. Uh, but that's the sound, the sound that gives us the overdrive. So let's listen to it without it. <laughs> see I'm writing the basically how much I'm sending it to the actual guitar uh, of the overdrive um, I'm sending uh, quite a lot and uh, during the solo because I really wanted to cut through and be uh, somewhat different and stand out so that's the overdrive again overdrive that's what makes this guitar really fat in this case and this is Sens amp this this uh, uh, plugin is absolutely priceless and I love using it on pretty much anything Okay, so let's listen to it with the delay now. So now the only thing that we uh, left here uncovered is the black hole. And right now the plugin is actually bypassed. So let's just get into the place where the plugin uh, is actually active. <laughs> So yeah, this plugin is just, uh, you know, I needed to get that uh, amazing sound with the biggest reverb and the biggest decay possible as if it was played in some crazy um, arena or I don't know. Um, and the black hole is the effect for it uh, by Aventide H9 is based on, on that uh, paddle, famous white paddle. And um, at, for every guitar track, I mean, I think I, I use it on, throughout the entire album. I can't really function without this plugin. It's absolutely essential. And as you can see, I'm um, controlling the mix and uh, controlling the size at certain parts, um, almost no pre delay, because I really want this reverb to just literally hit um, as soon as the guitar plays. Um, almost no feedback because the guitar uh, is so fast playing that I don't, really don't want any uh, feedback to be present. No resonance, I don't need the frequencies uh, emphasized. Um, uh, zero, uh, okay, gravity, yeah, I think gravity is more like a, a density of, of a plugin. Size, obviously, is the size of the room, which is pretty 
pretty big, uh, especially on this plugin. I mean, you can get to the sizes that are sound so so huge that it's just ridiculous. Also, I really love the tail of this plugin, and uh, just the overall sound is absolutely mind blowing. So, this is Black Hole, and and uh, for this um, sound, it just uh, really sounds great. I, I really love the way it came out. So this is the guitar processing for the K4Y. And again, I hope uh, it made sense uh, to you. Anyway, let's just move to the next tune.